Show your support. Join the discussion in the comments. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome back to my prediction series. I have brought this back since Wrestlemania and as this is going out on the Thursday before Money in the Bank, it is time to reveal my Money in the Bank predictions. But before I begin, if you submit your predictions in the comments to this video, you can enter in a little competition with me and if you are able to beat my score in the predictions, you will win a chance at one of these little babies. Just a little commemorative key ring to say that you managed to best me in predictions. Congratulations again to the winner from last month, John Beeson. Hopefully you have received your key ring now all the way out there in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Who knows, maybe you can go two for two if you join in this month as well. What I'm going to be doing is scoring a point for a correct prediction for the kind of standard matches, and that does include the pre-show match. And for the Money in the Bank ladder matches, if myself or you pick the correct winner you will get three points for that so good luck to you all i am going to start with the pre-show match daniel bryan and rowan taking on the usos there's been a very short sort of story with these guys and noticeable in their absence from this show are the revival obviously they've had some issues with the usos and it wouldn't surprise me if they make an appearance here, cost the Usos the match, and allow Brian and Rowan to win the match. They are the SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions after all, and could do with getting the win, even though this is a non-title match. So moving on to the main show. First up, we have the Cruiserweight title match. Arya Davari taking on the champion Tony Nese. Now, I will be honest, I don't really engage too much with 205 Live, so this is very much a stab in the dark. If you are more up to speed with 205 Live, that may be handing you guys a bit of an advantage over me. Tony Nese has obviously only just picked up the belt at WrestleMania, and I don't see him dropping it this quickly, so I'm going to go with a Tony Nese retention. Whether that plays into any of the stories that are going on on 205 Live or not, as I said, I've got no idea. Next up, we have the United States title match, a WrestleMania rematch. Samoa Joe defending against Rey Mysterio. Obviously, at WrestleMania, this was essentially a squash match because Rey Mysterio was injured. We believe he is kind of fighting fit again now. He's had quite a few matches on Raw since WrestleMania. And we've kind of had the inclusion of Dominic a bit more... Uh, on a week-to-week -week basis with his interactions with Samoa Joe. And even though Rey Mysterio won this week on Raw against Cesaro, I do think Samoa Joe will win here and retain the United States Championship, possibly setting him up for a future title match with Bray Wyatt, as there's been a little bit of interaction on Twitter between those two that might be Samoa Joe's next feud, and it would be quite good to give the US title straight to Bray Wyatt as soon as he returns to television. Next up, we have Roman Reigns taking on Elias. I can't really see Roman Reigns losing on a pay-per-view here, especially against Elias. I think a win for Elias would do wonders for him, but the way Roman Reigns is being positioned essentially is the most important figure on SmackDown, even though he's not involved in the title match. I don't think he will be picking up a loss here. And if he can get a couple of wins under his belt for the next few pay-per-views, he may even see himself in line for a title match by, say, SummerSlam, something like that. Something I think WWE probably want to push towards and something that would please Fox as well before SmackDown switches to them. Next up, we have the Steel Cage match, The Miz taking on Shane McMahon. Obviously, last time at WrestleMania, Shane McMahon sneakily managed to get the very cheap win over The Miz, even though it was The Miz kind of 
delivering the superplex off of the scaffolding. And I think by hook or by crook he is probably going to pick up the win here as well. Possibly with some outside interaction from Lashley. Setting up a Lashley Miz feud in the future. Lashley hasn't got anything to do on this card, so that would kind of play into their interaction on Raw. It is being hinted as well that Shane McMahon will be facing off against Roman Reigns at Super Showdown in Saudi Arabia. So giving him a strong win here would seem to make that possibly make some sense. Next we have the two Becky matches. First off, her defence of the Raw Women's title against Lacey Evans. I don't see her dropping the title to Lacey Evans here at all in Lacey's first outing. I think this is going to be more a kind of test as to see what Lacey can do one-on-one -on -one with a very experienced hand and see how much carrying Becky needs to do with her and where they kind of need to work with Lacey going forward really. I think she will sort of stay towards the top of the pecking order on the raw side of things but I think this is basically a kind of a test for her to see how she actually does in the ring against Becky. I think as well the likelihood is that Becky will drop the Smackdown belt before the raw belt so that she is solely the raw women's champion and then kind of transitions to solely being on raw. And then when she loses the Raw belt down the line, she will just be a member of the Raw roster because they desperately need that star power. Moving on to her match with Charlotte for the SmackDown Live title. I don't think Becky will be losing this one either. Hopefully this will be kind of the last part of the Becky-Charlotte feud for the foreseeable future. Charlotte can just kind of stay on SmackDown. We can get another challenger down the line for Becky's SmackDown title and she can lose it to whoever that is and then drift away over to Raw as I mentioned earlier. Seth Rollins will be defending his Universal title against AJ Styles. Obviously he's only just won this from Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. And it is being hinted and possibly now advertised that he will be defending the Universal title against Brock Lesnar in Saudi Arabia in a few weeks time. Presumably they will play in that that is kind of Brock's rematch from WrestleMania. And it is also being advertised that Seth will be defending the Universal title at Extreme Rules in a table match against Baron Corbin. Ah, <sighs> Yay. That aside, I think as Seth has only just picked up the belt, it is far too soon for him to be dropping it. He will probably be holding on to it for a very, very long time throughout 2019. Hopefully to the other side of SummerSlam and beyond. And finally, before we get to the Money in the Bank matches... Kofi defends his WWE title against Kevin Owens. And again, it has been advertised that Kofi will be defending in a triple threat at Extreme Rules against Owens and Orton, which would suggest that he is retaining the belt here. I think in order to make this kind of a credible title run and not just seemingly, look, we gave you what you wanted at WrestleMania, now we're going to take it away from you. They need to have Kofi win for the next couple of months and retain his belt. Potentially having some big multi-man match where he loses the belt but doesn't lose the fall. Which could then keep him in the title contention for a little while longer after losing the belt. Before potentially kind of drifting back into the tag scene with Xavier Woods and New Day because Smackdown really need the New Day back in the tag team division and with Big E out that's really the only dynamic we can go with at the moment is Woods and Kofi but I'm hoping that he gets a fairly lengthy title reign I don't want them to kind of Rey Mysterio him and just have him lose pretty much straight away. Now we have the Money in the Bank ladder matches. Now first off we have the women's match and in that we have Alexa Bliss, Naomi, Dana Brooke and Natalia from the Raw side of things 
and Bailey, Ember Moon, Carmella and Mandy Rose on the Smackdown side of things. First off, I don't think the winner will be on the Raw side of things. They could do really with kind of rebuilding that division. And I guess you could argue that having the Money in the Bank winner on that side does give a bit more credibility to things that side. But Alexa won it last year. Do we really want to see her win it again? Not really. Dana and Natalia don't seem right. And having a face win it with Naomi is a bit odd, really, because it is kind of a heel gimmick. So I can't really see that working out on the Raw side of things. However, on the SmackDown side of things, it seems a bit more likely. People have been hinting that possibly this could be Bailey's chance to win it and maybe add a little bit more aggression. Not necessarily a heel turn as such, but add a lot more aggressive streak to her character. I can't see it going to Carmella as she obviously won the first one a couple of years ago, but I can see them giving it to Mandy Rose. Apparently she is still kind of high up on their list backstage. She kind of fits their mould of, of the kind of woman that they like or that Vince likes. And it could be quite an interesting addition to the story that she has going on with Sonya. Obviously Sonya gave up this spot in the match for Mandy. And then potentially down the line we could either see Sonya accidentally costing Mandy the match when she finally cashes in. Or maybe she kind of turns on her and we see kind of a split of those two down the line. We could even potentially see matches where Sonya is actually facing Mandy for the briefcase itself. Just to give that split a bit more kind of gusto and a bit more meaning. And finally the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. On the Raw side of things we have Drew McIntyre. Baron Corbin. Ah. Ricochet and Sami Zayn and on the Smackdown side of things we have Ali, Andrade, Randy Orton and Finn Balor. Now I don't think we're going to have the winner of the men's ladder match on the same brand as the women's because each brand could do with a briefcase so sorry Smackdown guys I'm kind of ruling you out. Obviously, we've already mentioned that Randy Orton is potentially going to be in a title match very soon. Finn Balor and Andrade seem to be kind of mixed up with the Intercontinental title. And I just can't see Ali winning this match and being pushed right up to main event status straight away. I did maybe think it could be Andrade, but after his win this week on SmackDown, I kind of changed my view on that and because I am so sure that the women's briefcase will be won by a Smackdown star I do think that they have to split the briefcases up so that moves us over to the raw side of things Sami Zayn has obviously only just entered the match maybe possibly Baron Corbin I really hope not obviously he won it a couple of years ago and failed He's going to be in that main event picture fairly soon anyway. So does he need the briefcase? No. Did he do anything with the briefcase last time? No. So no. And Ricochet, his kind of stock has plummeted the last couple of weeks. He's had a couple of needless losses. And it seems that now that he's not being partnered with Alistair Black, they kind of don't really care about him anywhere near as much, which is a shame. To be honest, I don't think he was likely to win the briefcase this soon anyway. So that leaves us with Drew McIntyre. Now, it's been reported that he was meant to get quite a push towards the tail end of 2018 and possibly leading up to WrestleMania, especially within the Universal title picture against Roman Reigns. But obviously, with Reigns relinquishing the belt and Brock Lesnar being brought back in, they didn't want the heel-heel dynamic. So he's kind of had to take a bit of a back seat. And I think this will be a perfect shot in the arm for him it will feel like the briefcase means something again because 
He is one of the best promos and performers on Raw at the moment. They've already said that they want to kind of elevate the briefcase winners for these matches. So what better candidate than Drew McIntyre for the men's briefcase? So there we go. They are my predictions for Money in the Bank. As I said at the beginning of this video, please leave your predictions in the comments below and you could possibly beat me in these predictions and win yourself a little keyring prize. Please give this video a like and a quick subscribe to the channel as well. That will be very much appreciated. Till next time, I have been That British Guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.